But because six of the eight victims killed were women of Asian descent, police, still in the early stages of their investigation, have not labeled the shootings a hate crime. Just in the past few days, in San Francisco, an 83-year-old man assaulted and a 76-year-old woman punched in the eye. Just because uh, we are Asian. Just because we are Asian. Hi everyone, it's been a while since our previous episode in the Saucy and Selby podcast, which was about ignorance, the coronavirus, and stereotypes and racism. Like, I mean, that video went up before the pandemic was officially a pandemic. If you would like a refresher or you're just interested, feel free to check it out in the cards and description box. Anyways, today's episode, in a sick and twisted way, continues that thought on racism. Yes, today's episode is on Stop Asian Hate. Before moving on, I'd also like to ask you to subscribe and thumbs up on this video if you do enjoy these deep talks. Also, make sure to leave any suggestions for topics you're interested in down in the comments below. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you've been living under a rock or don't know what I'm talking about, do some googling or check out this link, which is also in the description. Throughout this pandemic, attacks on those of the AAPI community or Asian American Pacific Islander community have been on the rise, whether they're instances of microaggression or full-on inexcusable assaults. Most recently, eight people fell victim to a mass shooting by a white male in Atlanta, Georgia. Six of these individuals were Asian women. I won't go into detail about this case, but I just want to say that it's very upsetting that only when this many people die that this world gives some attention to the hate suffocating different racial and ethnic groups. I'm yellow, clearly, but that isn't the main reason for why I'm upset. By the way, before I get attacked, I'm not condoning a colorblind attitude to their fight against racism. Anyways, here's some food for thought. Racial slurs don't hurt because of the words themselves. They hurt because of the intent to hurt. Why must people hurt each other and spread hate? Do you know the answer to that question? Does that domestic terrorist who killed those eight people in Atlanta know? I don't know. I really don't know. After that sickening event and also the disgusting remarks from that Cherokee County Sheriff's Office spokesman who loves his China virus t-shirts, there have been more nasty, literally nasty incidents. One man punched an elderly Asian man on a New York City subway. Another man started urinating on an Asian woman, also on a New York City subway. In the latter, bystanders didn't even intervene in any way, and this happens more too often. Disgusting in all caps. I'm telling you, there are plenty more of these hate crimes, but the media does not even bother to cover these stories. Of course, part of the reason may be that due to culture, some victims in the AAPI community don't want to or are fearful of speaking up. However, silence is not silence. Hate is still hate. It exists even though there is a disproportionate amount of coverage. Don't get me wrong, I definitely am not saying that hate crimes committed against other groups do not deserve attention. However, I really have trouble believing that distribution of coverage is accurately reflecting the distribution of the hate crimes targeting different groups. The media needs to stop being racist. By the way, I'm not trying to be woke here and tossing around the word racist for the heck of it. There is gravity to this word despite the fact that race is a social construct. On this topic of media, we also need to talk about social media. I've stopped watching mainstream news and I'm not into using social media as my source of news because both can be very biased in terms of what they choose to show to me for different reasons. However, I was very impressed by Eric Nam's op-ed piece in the Times, which is likely what led him to being interviewed on various news platforms including CNN. I think right off the bat, the title gets the message across. If you're surprised by the anti-Asian violence in Atlanta, you haven't been listening. It's time to hear our voices. You haven't been listening. Eric Nam was born and raised in Atlanta where the shooting happened. He is also of Korean descent. In this op-ed piece, Eric Nam also touches upon the concept of the model minority. I really hate that concept so much. This concept is honestly the most warped form of institutional racism. It's extremely unfair. And just thinking about college admissions, my blood boils. Of course, my human still ended up going to and graduating from Ivy League, very fortunately, 
But it's time for the world to admit that people of Asian descent are robbed of their chances, often to be admitted despite their merits and qualifications being there. I'm not saying that students of other minorities shouldn't get further consideration. They really should in some sort of way because the playing field was never even from the start. But there must be a better way. Just giving some students the golden ticket or fast pass or whatever you want to call it does nothing to address the root of the problem. It perpetuates it. Youth colleges, by continuing to use this method of doling out admissions preferences for certain racial or ethnic groups, are contributing to the perpetuation of institutional racism. I mean, there's a reason for why Operations Varsity Blues came about, right? Aside from these blatant criminal acts, racism also exists in the form of microaggression. If you didn't watch episode 3 of this podcast series, I shared a personal story about an encounter with microaggression right before the pandemic became officially a pandemic. Someone actually came up to my human saying, I hope I don't offend anyone, but is there a reason as to why people of your culture are so protective of yourselves? Well, thanks for that racially charged comment, dude. If you're curious about the rest of the story, definitely check out episode 3 of this podcast series linked in the cards in the description box. But yeah, even if this person did not mean to cause any harm, he certainly did. And I'm not sure if he still understands to this day what he did, but yet he is also talking about cultural competency all around. I think cultural competency is a first step to everything, but... There is a lot of progress to be made, and we are not getting there right now, especially with hate being so rampant. So, how can we address this issue of Asian hate and racism? I am not an expert, but I believe that everyone has a role to play and can actively contribute. The first step is to educate yourselves. Check out these wonderful resources people have been putting together, like this website, stopasianhate.info. Even if you're like me and you're not a fan of social media, go on it to see what people are saying. Actually do that too because I want to see both sides. People fighting against the issue of hate and also people spreading hate. Although your current focus may concern combating anti-Asian sentiments right now, I urge you to remember allies. Not one movement is more important than the other. Black lives matter. That is not an easy battle and it requires everyone's support. With that, I'll end this episode here. Next time, if you see any instances of hate crimes taking fold or microaggression, be a responsible bystander and don't just sit or stand by doing nothing. Yes, maybe getting video footage or photos of the incident is useful as evidence, but find help. Report the incident to authorities. Your safety is important, but that does not condone cowardice in the face of hate. Thank you for watching. Please be respectful and share your opinions and thoughts regarding this discussion or recent events. Don't be afraid to share your stories. The mainstream media may have selective hearing, but you are not silent. Your experiences are not silent. For the remainder of this episode, I'll be sharing some news coverage. Hashtag stop Asian hate. Label the shootings a hate crime. We have lived in the shadows, invisible. But the tragedy shedding new light on a disturbing trend. Just in the past few days, in San Francisco, an 83-year-old man assaulted, parts of his neck broken, and a 76-year-old woman punched in the eye. In New York, a man says teenagers have been hurling racial slurs at him and throwing garbage at his laundromat for months. Just because of we are Asian. Data from 16 major cities shows anti-Asian hate crimes reported to police are up a combined 149% last year, according to research from California State University, San Bernardino. We are seeing a historic surge in anti-Asian hate crime compared to all hate crime that's going on. I just want to say that, uh, you know, I came to this country when I was 18, just finished high school, came over here. I went to U.S. Army to serve 20 years active duty, 24-7. You know, we have, I have put up, uh, put up uh, with a lot of in silence. Too afraid to speak out, fearing more abuse and discrimination. People question my patriotism, that I don't look American enough, they could not get over this face.
Uh, I want to show you something. I want to tell you. I don't have to live in fear, intimidation, or insults. I'm 69 years old, and I'm going to show you what patriotism, the questions about patriotism looks like. Here is my proof. Huh? This is sustained from my service in the U.S. military. Now, is this patriot enough? People look at me strange, and they to question me my loyalty to this country. I don't look American enough. Now, last I read the U.S. Constitution, we the people, we are all the same. We are equal. Which he refers to and has referred to the virus as the China virus, as the Kung flu. And Asian Americans are reporting an increase in racist encounters. I hate that I have to say this, but I belong. We Asian Americans belong. I was born and raised in the U.S. I am as American as apple pie, and I am as American as Korean barbecue. I am American. Please don't question me about that fact ever. Amra Walker is joining us now. Um, Amra, thank you for writing about this. I think this was so important for people to understand what a lot of Asians and Asian Americans in the U.S. have been going through. Tell us what happened to you. And that's why I wrote about it. You know, I wanted to be a voice for so many of us Asian Americans who don't speak out when these kinds of things happen. And, and I do want to say, Brianna, if I had encountered just one racially charged incident yesterday, I wouldn't have probably posted about it. But it was a fact that it happened back to back to back within a span of an hour, Brianna, uh, is what really shook me to my core. And right now, I have to admit, I'm shaking right now. I, I, I still can't believe um, that we went through this, that I went through this. Um, OK, so. Here's what happened. First incident, I, I'm walking through the airport. Uh, an older gentleman stops. He pulls down his mask, looks at me, and says, Ni hao, which is hello in Chinese, and, and then ching chong, which is a racial slur that's been used for, for decades. And um, I was stunned. I mean, it, this has happened to me before, sadly. Um, mm -hmm. But every time it happens, it, it, it shocks me. And like I've done in the past, I just kept walking. I, I didn't know what to say. Um, and he walked away, and the more I thought about it, my blood was just boiling. Um, and thankfully, I, I ran into him uh, inside the terminal. He was standing right behind me when I was trying to buy souvenirs for my husband and, and daughter. And um, I turned around and I said to him in a really stern voice, I said, do you understand what you said to me was racist and it, it was racially charged? Do you understand, sir? And um, he kind of looked at me with, with a smug look, and he just said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, and, and he walked away. Wow. Um, and, and so then I walked to the gate where my producer was sitting, and, and I, I was like, you won't believe what just happened. I'm really upset. Here's what happened. And I'm not kidding. As if on cue, um, literally within like five minutes, a young man walks up right in front of me while I'm sitting at my gate, and he's not wearing a mask. He comes right up to my face and says, hey, do you speak English? And I was like, I can't believe this is happening. And the first thing, I mean, I shot back immediately because I, I was already angry. And I said to him, yeah. why would you assume that I don't speak English? Tell me, why would you assume I don't speak English? And he said, well, well no, well, what language do you speak? And I said, well, obviously English, but I also speak Spanish because I knew he was expecting that I would say Chinese or Japanese or, or Korean. Anyway, I mean, uh, and, then, and then he started to mumble and speak incoherently. It sounded like he was mocking uh, the Asian language. My producer uh, was really disturbed by all this. Um, and also the people who were sitting at the gate uh, yeah. started yelling at him to get away from me because I kept telling him, you got to leave. Leave me alone. Uh, we're in a pandemic. You know, put on a mask. And because he get was away getting close. Me. He was not wearing a mask and he was getting close to you. Exactly. Right. You know, and, um, and so he was in my personal space. And then your producer basically got security, right? Got a police officer, and then what happened? Yeah, he, he interjected, um, and he, so the officer, this is where, <laughs> uh, talk about pouring salt into a, a gaping wound, right? I mean, uh, I told the officer what happened, Brianna, and my producer, who was upset, said, yeah, and, you know, this guy was saying racial slurs to her. Can you believe that? The police officer stopped. He approached my producer, literally, again, almost nose to nose, and again, we're in a pandemic. And he said very angrily, uh, that is not racist. Asking someone if they speak English, that is not racist, okay? Do you understand me? And I mean, this police officer was, I would say, six foot four, six foot, I mean, he was huge. And I was intimidated. Everyone around us was watching. My, my poor producer was, you know, both 
nervous and, and scared. And we said, okay, 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 uh, okay, fine, it wasn't racist. Um, and, and he walked away. They did track him down, but you know, I, I was so shaken by all of this and so disturbed that my producer kind of shooed me onto the plane and said, just, just you, you got to get away from this, you know. But yeah. I do you know, want to say that my producer was uh, extremely uh, defensive of me. And also, there was about five or six people who were sitting um, at the gate who came to my defense and were apologizing for no reason. They had nothing to apologize for, um, but they, and they expressed their shock. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's, thank goodness that they were there also just to kind of back you up and support you. But you yeah. you write in this talking about getting made fun of um, as a child. But I, I also wonder if here in just the pre, in the sort of like, you know, recent years, but the pre-COVID era, did you ever experience anything like this? I know you travel a lot for work. Have you ever been through anything like this? No, I, absolutely not. I mean, for it to happen, and look, these were all, I, I believe, were unrelated incidents, right? Uh, but to, for it to happen so quickly in succession, within I, about 45 minutes to an hour, that to me was what knocked me off my feet. And, and Brianna, I, I want to make it clear, it's, it's not about me, um, because Asian Americans across the country deal with this on a regular basis, and we're not talking mm -hmm. about it. And many Asian Americans don't raise their voices, including myself. I probably wouldn't have written about this if this wasn't so uh, egregious. And and this is why I'm speaking out. I'm normally a private person, but I want to be that voice. And I have to say, I've gotten so many emails from strangers and even colleagues at CNN that I've never met who are Asian or of Asian descent. And they said, thank you so much for talking about this and explaining to people why it is racially insensitive to assume that I don't speak English or anyone else that looks like me doesn't speak English. Disturbing surge of racist attacks against Asian Americans. Here's CBS's Nancy Chen. This surveillance footage shows a 71-year-old Asian grandmother violently shoved to the ground, her purse stolen. Just one of several attacks in California's Bay Area recently. A 91-year-old man pushed in Oakland's Chinatown, one of three attacks that day. 84-year-old Thai American Visha Ratanapakti knocked over while out for a walk. He died a few days later from his injuries. His family saying they believe it was rooted in racism. This guy should not be lined up back on the street. He should be charged with, with murder. If you see the video, there's nothing non-intentional about it. Asian American leaders say these attacks are a trend, not isolated incidents. What we are seeing is just the tip of the iceberg of what is actually happening in the communities. John Yang is the president of Asian Americans Advancing Justice and blames, in part, anti-Asian rhetoric surrounding the pandemic. The Asian American community has been faced with effectively two pandemics. The first is the COVID-19 pandemic, but the second pandemic that we have faced is also a virus. It's a virus of racism that we have faced. Asian Americans Advancing Justice has cited at least 3,000 anti-Asian incidents since last February. In New York City, there was an 867 percent increase in Asian hate crime victims in 2020 compared to the year before. NYPD has created a hate crimes task force. Hello. And police in Oakland's Chinatown are stepping up patrols to reassure business owners and families. We wanted our business owners in our community to know that we care, that we're concerned, and that we're going to do everything we can to keep this community safe. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. across the city are joining us in the AAPI community to say enough is enough. We're, we're tired of our voices being silenced. We're tired of being marginalized. We are tired of being the scapegoats. And it's time to, like, we're standing together to say that we are Americans. We love this country and to stop Asian hate.